folks. There's so much to talk about, as you would expect. Of course, the top two stories are geopolitical risk and, of course, what the Federal Reserve has in its brain, and so much are moving parts. And let's really start with the fact that on Monday, the market is closed for President's Day, and generally over a long weekend, uh, firms like to clear out their books, as they say, in the investment business. In other words, not hold some securities over a long weekend. We did see more selling pressure on Friday. Market was down, and that was more likely to do with what was happening geopolitically, Derek. Right. I mean, there were some signs that the the crisis in Ukraine is escalating. Um, you, you hear convic- conflicting reports about that. There is talk that some uh, U.S. officials will be meeting with Russian officials next week. I'm assuming that would occur if provided they haven't invaded at that point in time, but it is causing some levels of uncertainty. But the one thing, Dave, that we were looking at in the past is when you saw these types of events, when there was actually an invasion, it actually is sell the buildup and buy the invasion historically. Yeah, and and we've seen that because the uncertainty is now known, right? So you really have to think about, of course, what that means, because there are intended and, of course, unintended consequences if this happens. And let's really talk about two things. Number one, energy, and number two, the Federal Reserve. So obviously we've talked about this, we've covered this. If you listen to the show, the fact that Nord Stream 2 is the pipe that comes out of Russia through Ukraine all the way through Western Europe. And if there is a disruption in that, what happens to the price of energy, not only over there, but here in the United States? And so that could also cause further inflation, and that's how it ties to the Federal Reserve, Derek. Well, it would certainly have a direct impact on natural gas prices overseas, Uh, The thing about U.S. natural gas, it's very hard to transport across an ocean, so I'm not so sure it would really negatively affect natural gas prices in the United States, but it certainly would be hitting Europe at a tough time. You know, we have food inflation, we've got car price inflation, and and to add energy inflation would be very difficult for the European economy to withstand. And sometimes that's a really good point, Derek. Sometimes people forget about that because we become uh, so centric in our own thinking, in our own areas, but inflation is really a worldwide effect right now. And so, you know, we're trying to fight that here in the United States, but food inflation, energy inflation, especially those that we import, certainly could cause prices to go up. And remember, that is the first thing we started to talk about is what's causing prices to go up. Energy was a big part of that as well as the supply chain issues. So more pressure on inflation is going to be concerning because the Fed, of course, knows they have a problem. At the same time, do they raise interest rates aggressively if there's geopolitical risk around the world? Right. That You would certainly think that would dampen the pace of rate increases. One thing we were looking at the, earlier this week, though, is like in the case of the two-year note, in September it was trading at 20 basis points. It's now trading at 1.7%. So when people say the Fed is behind the curve, they're not kidding. The Fed hasn't changed their short-term rates at all, but the market already has, and that will have a dampening effect on economic growth going forward. You know, forward. it's really funny. The Federal Reserve is admittedly now saying they're behind the curve and you know it's almost almost we have to chuckle about it Derek because this goes back to May of last year when you and I were talking about is it transitory or not and we said we don't think it is transitory because some of the way you define CPI is a more structural issue. So even if they get aggressive, Derek, in raising rates, it may be too little too late because a lot of these issues might be structural. And it doesn't also necessarily mean that long-term rates will actually rise in lockstep. Just because the Fed increases the Fed funds rate by 25 basis points doesn't mean the 10-year yield will go up 25 basis points. It could go up significantly less because the bond market, which controls the long end of the yield, will sniff out, sniff out slower growth going forward. And of course, the Federal Reserve does want the market rates. And then all of these moving parts, of course, Danny, really brings you to the conversation that we have on a weekly basis, that if the facts and circumstances change, did you change your portfolio? Are you in the right place given where we are today? 